Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. Take your Bible and turn with me to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Started last week talking about just basic Christian disciplines. And uh, last week we talked about uh, the subject of the sermon was on praying the Bible. How'd you do this week with that, by the way? Did you enjoy that? Pick a psalm out and just pray the passages until you're done or until your time is up, however you uh, want to do it. I encourage you to continue that. Remember now that the to pick a psalm, it's easy. Just take the day of the month and you look at that psalm. It's like for example today would be what seven so this will be the seventh psalm or then you add 30 to it 37th psalm or 67th psalm or 97th psalm and in that way you can pray through the entire psalter in five months because you'll do you'll do it the whole thing that way if you if you practice that particular method or just to randomly select a psalm it's a good way to do it i mean sometimes i just want to uh, pray a psalm that the Lord is particularly laying on my heart, and so I'll just use that and maybe stay with it for a couple of days. I might just pray it over and over again until I feel like the Spirit's done with me. Today we're going to talk about meditation. So I'm going to begin today by quoting the fellow who's written a book. He's no longer with us. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. His name was Edmund Clowney, and Edmund Clowney wrote a book called Christian Meditation, which he entitled C.M., with an asterisk out to the side of it, instead of TM, transcendental. It's a play on the idea. Anyway, in this book, Clowney gives us a wonderful definition of meditation. And he says, quote, Christian meditation takes the yoke of Christ and learns of him as the suffering servant and triumphant Lord. In every way, Christian meditation is in submission to Jesus Christ, It is not and cannot be unmediated access to God, far less as experience of identity with God. It's not ecstasy, but wisdom marks the path of Christian meditation. To seek the face of the living God, the Christian does not launch a voyage in inner space, nor does he center on abstract infinity. Rather, he meditates on the Christ of the Scripture and on the Scripture of Christ. He fills his thoughts with what the Bible says about Jesus, for he is not attempting to imagine a Christ, but to learn about the real Christ. The disciple who would learn from his master must treasure his words. Clowney puts very succinctly what we have here in Psalm 1. And if you, if you have your Bible, turn there to Psalm 1. Look down there at verse 2. This will be our text today. Psalm 1, of course, begins the beatitude, Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So that's what meditation is all about. It's about you and the word of God. This is really not something that's been taught a lot, but should be taught. And that's meditation for the Christian. But what's happened is that meditation for the Christian has been usurped by Eastern religions. So let's talk about what Christian meditation is and what Christian meditation is not. Okay. So as we begin thinking about meditation as the practice of Christian discipline, all kinds of images assault us, and and usually those images are not good ones. Christian meditation has been under attack over the last 40 years by Eastern religions, And the gurus have imported to America their version of this discipline, most famously what we know as Transcendental Meditation, the Mahesh Yogi who came to America back in the 60s, or was it the 50s? He brought in TM, and adding to the problem of that particular uh, system, we have many mystic Christians and their varieties of meditation, and in some case, wholesale adoption of the transcendental movement into Christian churches. And so when we think about meditation, boy, it's just all over the board. Because you can go down the street to a church 
and they're doing transcendental meditation from a Christian perspective. There's no such thing, by the way. It's just still transcendental meditation. Because what transcendental meditation does is not what Christian meditation does. Eastern religions would have the disciple empty their minds in an effort to achieve a state of oneness with nothing. So in transcendental meditation or the other forms of Eastern meditations, you're trying to empty yourself of all thought so that you can get to a state of nothingness. Because once you reach that state, you have then connected with what they call the divine. They may even use the word God just to make it more Christian sounding for our palates in America. But you're trying to separate yourself from yourself so that you can have either an ecstatic experience with the nothingness or you can have this peaceful calm that runs over you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is everywhere. I, 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 find, I hear people talking about meditation all the time. But they're not talking about meditation from, this, from our perspective, from the Christian perspective. They're talking about it from this emptying of self and mind so that they can reach a state of peace or try to connect with some divine power in the universe or the universe itself. There's all kinds of language around what happens whenever you empty yourself of everything. Okay, so that's the goal of the Eastern mystic, the separation into nothingness. This state of separation can be ecstatic or peaceful, as I mentioned. It has become chic in today's culture for Christians to engage in TM or in in some form of yoga. The believer needs to be very, very careful here. Because all forms of yoga, no matter what it is, point back to the Eastern religion from whence it came and to the transcendental state which it wants to get you to. And you'll see a lot of people talking about all the energies. And they look, they have pictures of the spine, you know, and all these spots of energy along the spine. And as you meditate, you're you're transiting through each one of these energy levels, trying to get to nothingness and peace and align the body and its energy. There's, ladies and gentlemen, that is heretical. That is not biblical. So just do away with that stuff. Just discard it. Because it's wrong. And yoga today is trying to reach a new audience. And most of these people are well-meaning Christians who don't know what they're doing. Who are putting their bodies in positions so that they can engage that energy which leads to nothingness or to the divine which the yoga teaches. They may not put it in those words, but that's exactly what is going on. Be careful of yoga. It's, it's, not a, it's not a religious, you know, it's not neutral. Yoga always points back to an Eastern system. In the mystic Christian tradition, we have a lot of this today, a lot of um, Catholic and Lutheran and other groups will point to Christian mystic tradition where the state of mind leads to an encounter with the divine. You're looking for God by emptying yourself. Again, both of these are perversions of the reality of the Christian meditation. What Christian meditation really is, is not Eastern mystical. It is not Christian mystical. It is simply the believer and his or her Bible. That's it. You don't empty yourself, you fill yourself. So let's talk about what Christian meditation is. Christian meditation does not seek to empty the mind, but to fill it. It does not seek to empty the self so that a divine encounter can happen. A divine encounter for the believer has already happened, and you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. So you don't need to try to find some divine encounter through meditation because that's already happened if you have believed and trusted in Jesus. He fills you, he indwells you, and you now are a new creature in Christ. So the Christian now in meditation is not trying to have a divine encounter, The Christian in meditation seeks to continue the divine encounter and strengthen his or her connection with the Holy Spirit that indwells. To learn more, to have more knowledge, to have more grace, to connect with mercy, to, to understand the Lord Jesus and his ministry, life, sacrifice, divinity, all of that. That's what Christian meditation is all about. It begins and ends with the word of God. 
So you don't sit down, cross your knees, and say some magic word and try to empty your mind. You sit down or stand up and you open the Bible and you begin to meditate on this. And you fill your mind with this and you think about this. That is Christian meditation. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the fuel for everything we do. Prayer and meditation, reading and contemplation. That's the, the ladder of the monks. Reading, meditation, prayer, contemplation. The ladder of the monks, because those four things, whether you call it the ladder of the monks or you call it your Christian devotion, those four things, ladies and gentlemen, will, it will strengthen you and encourage your faith like nothing else. So how do you do it? Let's look back at uh, Psalm 1, verse 2. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The word meditate here is an interesting Hebrew word. It means to mutter or to speak to oneself, to perform a soliloquy. So just like if you were on a stage and you were talking to yourself in front of an audience, you know, of course, but you're having this soliloquy of you just you talking, Okay, that's the idea behind this word meditate. It means to mutter, to speak to yourself about something. So again, it's just that simple. The Christian takes the Bible, a little bit of time, and he or she sits down, stands up, whatever you're doing. Maybe you're in a car, maybe you're on the train, on a bus, on a plane, in your house, at your kitchen table, on your bed, lying down even. And you pick up your Bible either printed or electronic, and you open up to a verse, and you just begin to, you begin to say to yourself, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he doth meditate day and night. His delight, but his delight is in, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And suddenly the Holy Spirit, as you begin to speak that verse to yourself, out loud or, or silently. You're just, go, you're just running it over, you're running it over the, the processes of your mind, either by speaking or thinking it. And you repeat it and you repeat it and you repeat it and you repeat it. Again, you have to have a little time to do this. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit takes that and he'll open up one of those words to you. And you'll see the delight that's in that particular word, such as the law of the Lord. What does that mean? Oh, the entire counsel of God's word is available, you see. So the law of the Lord then becomes maybe that thing that you just, you snatch up. And you think about the law of the Lord and meditating on the law of the Lord and the delight that's in the law of the Lord. And suddenly you understand that word delight because you're now delighting in God's word. So you think this is exactly what happens when you begin to meditate. Delight comes. And then maybe you look down to verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So you begin to cascade those words over your mind, muttering to yourself, talking to yourself, thinking about them. And suddenly the Holy Spirit interrupts that and begins to instruct you, you see. So Christian meditation is not an emptying. It's a filling, and it's more than a filling. It is an overabundant filling that happens, and it is the food of which we need every day. I think it was St. John of the Cross wrote about meditation, and he said that meditation takes the grape of a verse or of a passage and cuts it up into little pieces, and then it's, it smashes the grape. And it begins to press all the juice out of the grape. And then that juice is what fills the delight of the believer as they meditate. So it takes just a little effort to cut up that grape, to mash it, and all that juice runs out. And it's so satisfying and sweet. It has everything in it that you need. It's just wonderful. So that, that's the idea here behind this idea of meditation, that you just... Work it over your mind and over your mind and over your mind. It's wonderful. So that's how we do it. But I want to suggest now five aids to meditation. These are things that will help you as you meditate. These are, I, I want to call them triggers in a sense. Because I'm, it's some, sometimes it's difficult for me to understand where one begins and the other one stops or the other one ends. So we'll begin with reading. 
they really these all of these aids flow so naturally into, into each other that you'll find a delight in seeing how the hand of God works in them. And the first one is, is reading your Bible. Reading the Bible is an important discipline for the continuation of the Christian life. But we need more than reading because reading is like water flowing through a, a pipe. And once the reading is done, the water is gone. Meditation stops the water and allows us to bathe in it for a moment. So reading begins the meditation process. So reading the Bible, important discipline. We're to be familiar with the scripture, not aliens to it, of course. So reading the Bible is important for us to understand the different sections of the Bible, for us to begin to memorize the Bible. But it's also a very important aid to meditation. We'll probably all have reading plans that we father, whether they're prepackaged or whether they're designed by a publishing house or a church or a parachurch group or it's one of your own creations. I mean, you can just pick a book of the Bible and just start reading through it. You don't have to have somebody to tell you today read so-and-so. You just go read a chapter in Isaiah every day until you're done reading Isaiah. It'll take you two months to do it. So that's a perfectly wonderful way to do a reading plan. If as you're reading, add meditation to your reading. So stop up the pipe and allow the water to back up so that you can enjoy it. And begin to think about what you're reading. I mentioned Isaiah. Uh, I recently started reading through Isaiah. So let's say I'm reading along and I come to chapter 5, which I did, and I'm struck by the parable of the vineyard, and I want to go back and read it again. So after I've read chapter 5, I go back to verse 2, and in verse 2, the parable of the vineyard begins, and it says in the parable of the vineyard that the Lord built a fence. I couldn't get past that in my meditation. I thought about that fence that the Lord built. He, he cared so much for that vineyard that he put a hedge about it, a fence, to keep it in, and to keep other things out. What a wonderful idea that is. So I'm reading along through Isaiah. I get to chapter 5. I, I'm struck by the parable of the vineyard. I go back and I read it again and I mark those verses. And after I've read my chapter, I begin to meditate on those verses. And as I said, verse 2 just pops to my mind and I just enjoy thinking about the fence. And I enjoy thinking about the ground having been cleared of all the stones and the precious vine that's placed in that property and the tower that's built in the and the vat that's dug. The Lord did all of that for Israel. Think about what he's done for the church. You see. And so as I'm as I'm reading, I hit that imagery and it just sparks my imagination. And so I go back and meditate. This is a method of reading with an eye to meditation. As I said, it's hard to know where reading stops and meditation begins because as you're reading along and you stop and you dam up that pipe and let the water back up, it's like, when did, when did I stop reading and I started meditating? So allow your reading time. Give your reading time a little extra minute or two so that you can meditate on what you've been reading. Second, second addition or aid to meditation is memorization. I know many of you are busy about memorizing the Bible, and that is wonderful. And anyone who has worked or participated in a vacation Bible school knows just how wonderful memorization is because we see it in our kids, right? The kids, they love to memorize the scripture. I'm always amazed every single year. I put the scripture up, and by the second night, they pretty much got it. I mean, pretty much they've got it. And, of course, they get it repeated in the classroom, and they get it repeated when they go to see Miss Val because she asks them about their verses, and they get it repeated when they go out to recreation, and they get it repeated when they come back in here for the final assembly. So the kids just pick it up like that. Memorization is an aid to meditation because as we memorize the scripture, it's just, an, it's just a short little step over to meditating on the scripture. Because what are you doing when you memorize? You're saying to yourself, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world. So you're memorizing for, you know, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world. What's the next phrase? That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave. And so you're already muttering and trying to memorize. It's easy then to suddenly stop and allow that to become meditation. So you're doing two things at one time. Not only are you memorizing the verse, but you're also meditating on the verse. And you're getting all that good, as I, if I can again quote St. John of the Cross, all that good juice out of the verse. Isn't that wonderful? So meditation is an aid 
or memorization is an aid to meditation. Third, prayer is an aid to meditation. Last week we talked about praying the Bible. So, by following the scripture and prayer, we can add power and freshness to our praying. Now consider adding meditation to your prayer closet. You're praying the Bible. Let's say you're praying Psalm 4. And you're praying through Psalm 4. And suddenly you realize that you're, you started to meditate on Psalm 4. As you're praying those passages, suddenly you start thinking about those passages. And you fill your mind with the water of all that passage has to say. And you begin to meditate. So allow a little more time in your prayer closet for meditation because, again, it's just a short step from praying the Bible to meditating on the Bible. Because, again, you're doing the same thing. You're taking a, sh- you're taking a passage, a short little phrase from the Bible, and you're beginning to pray those words. And as you pray those words, what are you doing? You're muttering them. They're, they're running over the facilities of the mind, and you begin to meditate So allow time in your prayer closet. Fourth item of prayer or aid to meditation is journaling. Journaling has been a spiritual discipline. It's been around for a long time. And some of you may do this now. I know that there are some folks who today uh, carry journaling Bibles. Diaries, journals, life maps have been used by Christians in their walk with Christ for generations. And as I said today, there is an increased interest, I think, in this discipline Publishing houses have started printing journaling Bibles with blank pages where you can either write or draw notes from your readings or during sermons and lessons. So journaling Bibles are popular. You can use the blank page to aid meditation. It's really simple. As you write out the verse in your journal, you're thinking about the verse. So you're saying it, you're writing it, and you're thinking about those words, and meditation begins as soon as you allow the time let the water back up, and you begin to write. And maybe you write it again, or maybe you write it three or four times in your journal. And maybe you then you begin to write out ideas, things that the Holy Spirit is saying to you as you journal. Really, journaling is a marvelous way to aid memorization as well, because as you journal and meditate, you're also memorizing, and you're adding not only the facility of the mind, but also the hand. And, of course, we know how much that aids memorization. Writing down the first phrase from the passage, then continuing the flow of thoughts as the Spirit leads your thinking and writing, you'll discover beautiful designs that follow. And sometimes those designs might manifest themselves in images, pictures that you draw. This method will reinforce meditation, memorization, reading, and will help with your meditation. And finally, I just wanted to add one more thing because uh, it's dear to me, and that is art. Art as an aid to meditation. I love music. I love to play music. So this seems to be a natural choice for me. While this may not be a regular part of Christian discipline for everyone, it is a way to allow our creative side to enjoy the manna of meditation. Please don't dismiss this out of hand if you're not very artsy. I would challenge you to add meditation to your enjoyment of whatever it is you do. Music, drawing, writing, whatever your creative side likes. Add meditation to it. If it's music, intentionally sit down with your Bible and your instrument when you meditate. And as you say the passage over and over, focus on the phrases and the cadence, then begin maybe to play a chord behind those words. Drawing. Perhaps you are focused on something as descriptive as Isaiah 5, 2, with the <clears throat> the fence and the tower and the and the, the press and the ground and the, and the vine and all of that. Plan to draw, to take a drawing pad and some appropriate pencils and begin to draw the pictures. The Holy Spirit aids your meditation in the Word of God and you begin to draw those pictures out. Finally, writing. Do you like to write stories? Perhaps that's your creative gift. Take your pad and pencil with your Bible. Sit, say you're focused on Psalm 34.8. And you're reading Psalm 34, 8, you repeat the words to yourself and you imagine a great banquet. And so you start to write a little vignette, creating a scene that the Holy Spirit has brought before you. Again, the goal is not perfection of word or phrase. It's not perfection of tune if you're doing something with your instrument or singing. It is just simply meditation itself. That's the goal. And so these are just aids to help you when you meditate. The goal is to blend creativity and meditation on the Bible and to boost your meditation. 
Remember that Christian meditation is focused on the Bible. Always, always, always remember that. If I say nothing else today about meditation that you hear, hear that. Meditation, Christian meditation, is rightly focused on the Word, period. There is nothing else. All of these aids, the reading, memorization, journaling, arts, all of those things, are sim- simple. Memorization is all of it is just an aid to what you do with the Bible and you. That's all you have to have. And ladies and gentlemen, this is wonderful fruit for your personal growth. Every one of us should be meditating every day on God's Word. And it doesn't take very long. Just give it a little time. Add it to your prayer closet. Add it to your memorization routine. Add it to your reading routine. Whatever you're doing regularly for your Christian devotion, add meditation to it. Just stop the pipe. Begin to think about the water that's building. Think about it. Bathe in it. Allow it to wash over your mind. Allow it to influence your prayers. Allow it to influence your thoughts. Think about it. Mutter it to yourself. That is Christian meditation. It is good to do it. It's healthy. It's good Christian activity. And it always is focused on the Bible, not the individual. You're not taking a journey inside. You're not going on some journey down the river Styx. You're not trying to empty yourself of all things. You're trying to fill your mind with God's word. So you're focusing on Christ. As Edmund Clowney said, you're focused on Christ and the scriptures, nothing else. So think about these five aids. Consider how adding at least one of them to your daily routine may help you. And I just encourage you to do more meditation. Focus on it. Add it. Some may not fit with your personality, and that's fine, but I would encourage you to go from here today and, t- and be resolved to be more intentional in your practice of Christian discipline. So let's review. Number one, last week we talked about praying the Bible. Do that. Add that to your discipline every day. Whether you do it at one prayer time or two, add praying the Bible to your discipline. Two, add meditation to your prayer closet. Add it to your Bible reading. Add it to your routine of memorization. Stop the pipe and allow the water to back up and wash over your mind as you meditate on God's Word. I'm telling you, if you try this, you will not stop. It will be such a joy and delight to you. You'll say, where has this been all my life? Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.